your gut is so spectacularly clever and today we're going to be looking into why stress with IBS is your worst enemy and how your gut deals with stress. We're going to establish three things. One, how is the gut governed? Two, how do those governors deal with stress? And three, what are the overall symptoms that we experience with IBS, bloating and IBD? Hi you guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in with me today. Before we jump into this video, why not give this video a thumbs up and jump on down to that subscribe button. It really does help my channel grow so much. And also drop a little hello in the comment section below. So stress is widely thought to contribute to many common gut disorders such as celiac disease, food intolerances, IBS, gastritis. But until now, I had no idea how much of a big deal stress was when it came to the gut. So first off, let's talk about how is the gut governed? So the body as a whole, I'm talking the body, the mind, the limbs, all of those things are all governed by the CNS, the central nervous system. So for example, if you were to touch something hot or sharp, the nerves in your finger would tell your brain that that plate is hot. And then your brain would recognize this as a bad thing and cause the muscles in your arms to contract to move your finger away from the plate. Your gut, on the other hand, is lined with a complex system of cells. And this is called the enteric nervous system. The enteric nervous system is mind-blowingly intelligent. I can't even quite get across to you how amazing it is. And that is because it can do its daily functions without even having to talk or communicate with the brain. It can independently receive and give out information. It can record experiences and it can respond to experiences without ever having to touch the brain stem or the brain. Now the CNS and the ENS, the central nervous system and enteric nervous system, do still speak to each other. So for example, if something that's governed by the CNS, like your eyes or your nose, smells or sees food, it will tell tell your enteric nervous system and then it will start to produce things like saliva or digestive enzymes. It will start mucus production and get your gut moving and equally your enteric nervous system will tell your central nervous system when it's time to stop eating. So once the enteric nervous system feels like it's full it'll send a signal to your brain which will tell the central nervous system that you're full and that it's time to stop eating. Now a relationship between the gut and mind has been very heavily documented and you can check out my video from last week is your gut making you depressed and anxious which I will link for you just up there and I will also drop it in the comment section below. So make sure to check out that video after this one. But abdominal symptoms have been found in people who suffer from migraines, anxiety, depression. And originally the link was never really understood, but now so much more research has been done into it. And it's really important that this information now reaches the people who are suffering with things like IBS. And one of the things that really baffles me that to this day they haven't fixed is that when you suffer with mental health, a lot of the medications that they put you on, the main side effects revolve around the digestional tract. So how does stress affect the central nervous system? When you are stressed, your body is flooded with stress hormones and we enter something that's called fight or flight mode. And most of you will probably have heard of this. Your body basically recognizes it as a way that you're up against an enemy or something dangerous and you either need to fight it or run away and hide from it. And what these stress hormones do is they put you in this heightened sense of awareness and heightened sense of readiness so that you can run really, really fast and you can fight and be really strong. This response is the same kind of thing that you will come up against when you hear stories about mothers lifting cars off of babies. Now, the digestive system is particularly susceptible to stress and here's why. When your brain recognizes that there's a threat around you, it pulls all of its resources into tackling that task. So let's say, for example, a cave woman came up against a lion. She's not going to be able to fight that lion, so she needs to run away as fast as physically possible and hide. Now, what the central nervous system, what the brain does in this situation is it sends out a message to the entirety of the body and everything that is non-essential is shut down. So basically, the CNS pulls all of the essential workers out of the gut. So the ENS is basically told to stop working and shut down construction until later notice. Now, in the short term, this isn't actually a problem. In fact, it's a really way to survive and that's why we've all inherited it because once she's gotten away from the predator or died because I picked lion and I don't think she's gonna outrun the lion maybe she would have got to a high spot I don't know much about being a cave woman which I'm pretty sure I've said in a video before but yeah but anyway once she's gotten to safety the CNS will tell the ENS that it can start work up again and get back to normal digestion now the problem is that in the 21st century we don't come up against many caveman like stresses they aren't fleeting you can't run or fight and it's all over modern day stresses are much more prolonged and they can be continuous and the reasons for stress and anxiety in the modern day and age are often irrational 
emotional, imaginary, or self-inflicted. Things like worrying someone's talking behind your back, or you're overloaded with work by your boss for the next six weeks, knowing that you're gonna miss a deadline at work and there's nothing you can do about it, trains being delayed, making you late for work, or anxiety surrounding completely hypothetical situations when you're overthinking in bed at night. None of the above are quickly remedied, and none of them really require a physical fight or for you to run away, unless you wanna go punch your boss in the face for assigning you too much work, in which case I would definitely suggest running away as fast as you can. Ongoing and chronic stress in the body means that we never fully leave the fight or flight mode, meaning that all of these stress hormones are flooding our system on a consistent basis. And herein lies the problem. Fight and flight was designed to protect us for short periods of time. And because it was only supposed to be brief, the fight or flight response is very extreme. During fight or flight, the blood flow to your gut decreases, intestinal motility decreases, the permeability of your intestines change, digestive enzymes stop being produced, mucus production alters, adrenaline and noradrenaline are pumped into your system, your heart rate increases, causing tachycardia, your blood pressure increases, your respiratory rate increases, your pupils dilate, your muscles tense, and your bladder control is weakened. And this is just to name a short list of things that happen to the body during the fight or flight response. And this is the thing, it's so freaking extreme. And when you're chronically stressed or stressed for prolonged periods of time, your body is in this horrible state of just panic. This is why some women or some Olympic athletes find that their periods stop during times of stress. And it's because the human body is so smart that it recognizes that your current situation is way too stressful to bring a child into and survive. So if your body is capable of making that kind of decision without your input, think of the things it could be doing to your gut, your digestion, your IBS, and so much more. So let's talk about the symptoms that the fight or flight response give you. Now this is a list that I have found from the fight or flight, not for IBS. Symptoms of the fight or flight response include butterflies, bloating, constipation, difficulty swallowing, nausea, indigestion, heartburn, diarrhea, decreased gut motility, decreased blood flow to the gut, and therefore a reduced amount of nutrients being absorbed by the body, leading to things such as poor nutrition absorption, bloating, yep, bloating's on that list twice, cramps, constipation, vomiting, nausea, trapped gas, mucusy stools, backache, tiredness, and a lack of energy. Now, if that is not just a list of IBS symptoms, I don't know what is. So let's talk about what we can do to help in these times of stress. I mean, it's a hard one. Never in a time of stress has someone sitting me down and say, you just need to calm down, helped. It's made me want to hurt them, but it's never made me less stressed. It's made me angry, but it's never made me less stressed. One of the things I do hope this video has helped you with is locating the problem. Because if you're anything like me, I don't really even recognize that I'm stressed until either my body or somebody else tells me. And to be honest, I often deny it for at least a couple of days before I take action against the stress instead of the symptoms that I'm getting, such as bloating, constipation, cramps, headaches. So now that you've identified the problem, you can one, hopefully ease it. Things like meditation, exercise, screaming into a pillow, anything that's gonna help you deal with the stress that you're currently under. So try exercising and that will hopefully flush out some of that noradrenaline and adrenaline and give your body somewhere to focus all of this excess energy that it's prepared for you to go and fight a bison or something. The second thing it's gonna help you with is change or ease the circumstances. If you're really that overloaded at work and it's affecting your health, you need to speak to somebody. There is nothing more important on this earth than your health and nothing more valuable. So if you can, maybe pluck up the courage to speak to your boss about how your workload is taking an effect on your everyday life. And if you don't wanna do that, I would highly advise having a good cathartic experience with someone. Speak to one of your really good friends or a boyfriend, a husband, a girlfriend, a mother, a father, anyone who you think is gonna be supportive and tell them at the beginning, look, I'm not asking for you to fix these problems. I just need someone to speak to and then talk to them. Even if that means crying, weeping, shouting, just get it all out and cathart with somebody. And sometimes it can make such a massive improvement to your health health and mental well-being because stress really is your worst enemy when it comes to IBS. This one is the most important tip I can give you and it's so difficult. I know, I know it's so difficult. Don't binge. Binging loads of food into a digestive system that's not open for business is only going to end in disaster. Remember, when you're really stressed and you open that fridge, you've got to think to yourself, my body is in fight or flight mode. My central nervous system has shut down every worker available in my enteric nervous system, in my gut, in my digestion tract. So if I put food in there, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's just gonna cause problems. It's gonna sit there for ages and it's gonna make me feel 
so much worse. And of course, all of the obvious things, meditation, yoga, and talking to good friends about anything you need to as part of a weekly routine. Don't let it get to the point where you can't go any further. Don't let the problem fester. Thank you guys so much for tuning in with me. I really hope that this helped. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or anything you'd like to add to anyone watching this video, please drop it in the comment section below. I will also just add my Instagram handle for you right there. And also why not say hi in the comment section below? It really does help my YouTube YouTube channel to grow and to reach more people who are suffering with bloating, IBS and stress. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next week. Bye!